Hello and thank you for joining us. In a previous video, we dealt with how to sketch linear and quadratic functions. Today, we will practice sketching the exponential and hyperbolic functions. Making a sketch of a function is different to plotting a function. Firstly, when we plot a function on the Cartesian plane, we normally use a table of values to assist us. This way, we get an accurate idea of the exact position of the points we plot. But sketching a function is like a shortened version of the point-by-point -point plotting of a function. A sketch of a function only shows the most important features of the function. To do this, you won't even need graph paper. Have a look at this question. Sketch the exponential function of y is equal to 3 to the power of x plus 2 and the hyperbolic function y is equal to 2 over x plus 3. The question says to sketch an exponential function y is equal to 3 to the power x plus 2. We know it is an exponential function because x is in the exponent. And we know that y is equal to 2 over x represents a hyperbolic function because x is in the denominator. We need to work out the most important characteristics of these two functions. Let's start with the exponential equation. I'm sure you remember that the standard form of any exponential function is y is equal to a times b to the power x plus q. The Q value is the value of the horizontal asymptote. The A values tells us where to place the graph in relation to the asymptote. It can also stretch the graph. And the B value tells us if the graph is moving towards or away from the asymptote. Now any change in the A, B and Q value affects the parent exponential graph. Let's check. Here, the parent exponential function is y is equal to 2 to the power of x. If we change the a value to negative 1, the exponential graph is placed below the asymptote. When b is more than 1, the parent graph of the function moves away from the asymptote. If b is changed to less than 1, the graph will be drawn towards the asymptote. If we are drawing from left to right, the Q value is the value of the horizontal asymptote and moves the graph up and down. Let's go back to the equation we were given to check the A, B and Q values for this function. The value of A is positive 1 and the value of Q is positive 2. We can also see that the value for B is positive 3. The Q value of the graph is 2 which means that the asymptote is y is equal to 3. The a value is positive, showing that the graph is placed above the asymptote. The b value is more than 1, and this tells us that the graph will move away from the asymptote. Now we just need to find the point at which the graph cuts the y-axis. This is called the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0 in the equation and solve for y. y is equal to 1 plus 2, which means the y-intercept is 3. That wasn't so difficult, was it? Now we can sketch the graph. It has an asymptote of y is equal to 2, a y-intercept of 0, 3, and the graph is placed above the asymptote. The graph is drawn from left to right, which means it moves away from the asymptote. Just out of interest, let's look at what this function would look like if we change the value of a to negative 1. The asymptote is still at y is equal to 2. The graph is still moving away from the asymptote, but the graph is now placed under the asymptote. Remember, this happens because we changed a to the value of negative 1. This can be quite confusing to remember, so make sure you study the effects each of the variables a, b, and q have on the function. Now for the hyperbolic function. Remember, when the variable x is in the denominator, we immediately know that the equation belongs to the hyperbolic functions. 
The parent hyperbola is given by the equation y is equal to 1 over x. The graph of y is equal to 2 over x plus 3 has two asymptotes. The lines x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 3. Remember that the horizontal asymptote has the same value as q. When q is a positive value, the horizontal asymptote will move up, causing the graph to move up as well. When q has a negative value, the horizontal asymptote and the graph will move down. Now to work out the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we need to take the equation given to us and set y equal to 0. Negative 3 is equal to 2 over x. Negative 3x is equal to 2, which means that x is equal to negative 2 over 3. I hope you can see why we are doing this. The point at which a line intersects the x-axis always has a y value that is equal to 0. By setting y equal to 0 in the equation, we can easily find the point which is called the x-intercept. Do you think we have enough to sketch the curve now? So far we have the following. The curve we are sketching is a hyperbola because the x is in the denominator. The a value is positive 2, so I know the two curves of the hyperbola appear in the first and third quadrants. The q value is 3, which means the asymptote and the graph have shifted 3 units up. The vertical asymptote is still x is equal to 0. We worked out before that the x-intercept is negative 2 thirds, so that completes the sketch. Well, we did a lot in today's video. If you study the procedure that we have followed in this video carefully, you should be able to sketch the graphs of any exponential or hyperbolic function. Remember to keep practicing, and when you're ready, you may tackle the questions in the functions task video for this series. See you soon.